welcome Nicole to Handmade to Heroin, the podcast. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, can <laughs> you, you tell so us much. a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah, and I see we're both loaded with kitties, so this is yeah. This I know <laughs> we have kitty 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 uh, uh, day going on here. Um, yeah, yeah, I uh, I am an I, I call myself an actor vist. Um, because I'm an activist and an actor. <laughs> I'm mainly an actor and recently I've gone more into directing, uh, writing and producing. So um, on all fronts, uh, television, uh, theater um, and film. Yeah, so that's, that's what I do and I'm active in the climate movement and in uh, women's rights, human rights. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I love this. Thank you. Um, before we get on to this very juicy interview, um, I'm going to ask you for a fun, safe word. If I if I go somewhere, if I ask a question that you don't want to answer, it's like, yeah, it's a little touchy, Lori. So what's your word? I'm going to go with peacock. <laughs> okay. All right. So if I, if I ask something... Uh, too sexy or strange or, or whatever, you can just go peacock and, and you know, uh -huh. we'll, we'll move on from there. Okay. Okay. So I was absolutely, so we've been friendly online for a while and one day I'm on TikTok and I, I see TikTok goes, well, you might know Nicole. And I'm like, oh, because I think it was your first video on there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then any second. Yeah, I'm I'm not very active on it, but I thought uh, I want the message to go out, and I heard that it goes out fast on TikTok, so I did it on TikTok. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there you were. It looked like you were in a bathroom, you know, this a lovely bathroom, and and there you were, speaking from the heart, like from the soul, about Iran about what's going on right now with the women in Iran. And there you were cutting your hair off right there. That's just as raw as it gets. And I was like, oh my God, please, 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 please. Um, we desperately need to understand this situation and what we can do about it. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, um, what happened is I actually had COVID at the time. Um, so, um, what happened is uh, on, on September 13th, um, a young woman of 22, Masa Amini, um, who most people know by now, um, basically died in custody. She was in custody uh, because the morality police decided that she had too much hair sticking out of her hijab, you know, out of her hair covering. And um, there are videos of her um, falling, you know, from a seated position on the floor. They claim that, um, you know, she hit her head and, and, and died. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there she was in a coma. And um, there, there, were clear, there was clear evidence of torture and, and abuse. Um, and uh, this was not a single case, but this is how the whole uprising, this current uprising, because there were many over the last years, but this one, uh, um, which is uh, by, led by women. And um, it led to such an outrage and an emotional wound was opened that had been, you know, been scraped for the last 40, three years that the country is under the theocratic rule of the mullahs against the majority of the people. And I think, uh, I, I think this is what uh, the world doesn't understand, who people who don't uh, know any uh, Iranians other than from CNN, you would think they are all a bunch of um, uh, crazy fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. uh, who want to kill anybody that has any other um, thoughts um, on on God than uh, the one Allah that they believe in and and the Quran and um, when you actually look at what those fundamentalists uh, say and do 
um, it has nothing to do with the Quran. <laughs> you know, they are abusing the scriptures mm -hmm. and and putting in danger and putting in, in shame um, millions of Muslims, good following Muslims, you know, um, uh, mm. around the world. And um, what also most people don't understand that this fundamentalist regime was actually um, it, uh, helped the mullahs were helped to come to power by the United States. So um, why does the United States need to help the people now? Because they are uh, partly responsible of what's happening uh, right there. And what is the underlying reason? It's oil. It's money. You know, it always is greed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so, yeah. And so, I, so people have been going uh, on the streets. Uh, for those people who haven't uh, followed the story, is that mainly women have been going on the street protesting, taking their hair cover, their hijab off, burning it on the streets, and literally screaming into the dictator's face. <laughs> you know, no. so, I've seen some of those. They're wonderful. Feminist-led movement that is supported by good uh, men uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of people might be surprised by what life was like in Iran before 1979. Could you tell us just a little bit about that? And what's your connection? Before oh, we even do that, what's yeah, your yeah. personal connection, like your story? Yeah, uh, let me also explain what the cutting of the hair means. So yes, thank um, you. So what I did, um, I, I, I felt so desperate and so um, impotent that I wasn't able to do anything. I'm half Iranian. My father, who sadly passed away um, just a year ago, he was from Sorry. Iran. Um, I have been in Iran only once, but it was during a time where it was very liberal. And um, the cutting of the hair, the significance, is uh, it's actually a sign of mourning. But also, when you look at it from uh, the point of view of protesting, it's also a rebellious act. It's, 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 you know, because hair <laughs> is feminine and is intimate and all of sensual and all of these things and cutting it is also like a fuck you to the patriarchy. Um, but it mainly is a sign of mourning. And I was mourning, um, you know, what, what happens to our sisters in those countries and, and the kind of oppression we can't even imagine that kind of oppression so living in a country where i still have the freedom of speech although i don't have the freedom over um, my own body um, mm. uh, anymore um, is you know i felt like i needed to do something drastic so that's mm. where the hair cutting came into place um, iran uh, before 1979 uh, was called the paris of the middle east it was I didn't know that. aunts and and cousins and and all the women that I knew were I mean literally running around with the shortest skirts, the part the party <laughs> parts. I mean, it was um, really it was the Paris of the Middle East. And mm. um, uh, what people also need to know is that um, the Shah, wh who was in power before the revolution was also installed by the Americans and the Brits. And he made some good deals when it comes to um, Iran's resources, oil. So if I can stop you right there, thank you. It, it, it's very interesting to me that basically in exchange for oil, money, 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 keep, it, keep everything going, um, the United States willingly and purposefully enabled um, such a fundamentalist backwater theocracy. And it's interesting to me that at this very point in time, um, it, here in the United States, um, we're, we're headed down, our trajectory isn't all that different, okay? I mean, we don't have the hijabs, 
but a, there are 10 year old girls being forced to carry their rapist child. Yeah. How's how, how are these paths divergent? Like, you know, how is it not? Um, to me, when I see what's going on in Iran, in, in the former Paris of the Middle East, gorgeous styles, I'm sure it's still gorgeous women, but stylish, well-educated, just extraordinary, sophisticated culture. And to have it go from that uh, to more literal morality police. And how are we, do, I mean, I see parallels everywhere. Do you have any stories in your family or any that you're aware of, of what it was like before that 1979 revolution in terms of um, the way it felt, things that were happening that kind of signaled the change to come? Well, um, uh, I mean, I, I was a child, so um, I, I, but I do remember a lot of discussions in, in, in my house about what was going on. And uh, people were not happy with the Shah because although the Shah on the outside looked like, oh, we're in Paris and everything is great, he wasn't gr uh, good to his own people. Um, you know, there was, um, he was enriching himself, um, uh, grueling taxes on the poorest people and um, exploitation very much like um, the kind of exploitation that we see with um, within this country, really, where the poor people pay the taxes and the richest mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. get away with murder, literally. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So um, when you're saying you see parallels, um, I see parallels, and I grew up in Germany. So um, I see parallels with 1936 Germany before Hitler um, became the chancellor and came into power. Um, and uh, I think when we look at what's happening in Europe now, um, I always say that I'm not a very political person. Now I'm hearing myself talk about the revolution. <laughs> I well, you, you, I, I guess... If we don't participate in any kind of political thought or discussion, then any oppressor wins by default. Exactly. I believe it's their intention. I listened to this absolutely brilliant podcast. Can't, can't take credit for this thought. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant. It's an analyst about um, Putin's messaging and the new style uh, propaganda. And it's very much uh, say different things, say left, say right, say front, say back, say upside down every day and confuse people so that they just get demoralized and sit on the sofa and, you know, just numb out because they don't feel like they're able to discern truth. But that's a ruse. Yeah. And we ignore it at our peril. So I just yeah. want to acknowledge you for going, you know what, I, you know, I know which way the wind's blowing. Well, I think, you know, um, uh, if you believe that there is an underlying goodness in the human nature, um, you know, I always look for that. Um, that that's, that's the one, one thing I always look for. And it's sometimes very hard to find. And right now with the, the move to the right in Sweden, in Italy, um, and mm. in this country, um, and mm. in many, many other countries, um, it is kind of a frightening prospect. And when you look at the morality police in Iran, I don't see what's different here um, for a man to, 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 to say and to decide uh, that a woman cannot have an abortion, even if she got raped, you know? And uh, I mean, and then, you know, so the pro-lifers, you know, I, th I think we should find a different word for that because they're not pro-life. People for pro-life would actually take care of the child and the mother, you know. So that's a pro-lifer who is actually making it possible for a yes. woman to, um, but, but. Uh, Food, medical so care, going, clothing. Like, I, I get so freaking mad about this. Um, there's a rally on Saturday that I hope a lot of people um, uh, will go to a pro -board. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And it's interesting. I think it's important, just like with the pro-life, because if you were pro-life, you'd have resources and 
you know, food, shelter, clothing, wonderful things for the children, like there'd be something there for anybody. <laughs> and, um, and in terms of pro-abortion, like I like pro-choice because I, I don't think anyone gets up in the morning and says, oh, it's a great day. I hope someone gets an abortion. I don't think anyone feels that no, way. No, no. <laughs> but, but to be able to choice, yes. have it be like it was always until a few decades ago when it became politically expedient, it was always between a physician and the, his patient, his or her patient. Like it was, it was a private decision. Yes. Uh, you know. It's, it's also interesting to be the woman's because it's our body. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it's life threatening or something. Come on. Um, it's interesting. Just a quick parenthetical from astrological perspective on Saturday, the eighth Pluto goes, it stations direct. So that's a very, very, very um, powerful energy for transformation, for rebirth. Whoa. So it's, really interesting to me it's right before a full moon in aries which is kapow kind of energy so th I, I would be very surprised if we don't see either a massive turnout and or some real visceral feeling um not just well i showed up to do my part but like some real mm, passion frozen you were frozen for a second sorry yes interesting yes. interesting uh -huh. um <laughs> yeah on passion you were on passion <laughs> no i mean your word in the goddess's ear um mm. i uh yes absolutely uh, it shouldn't be called pro-abortion i'm not pro-abortion um I've of course never not had one but i'm pro-choice mm. i'm pro-choice for a woman to choose to wear her head up if that makes her feel better and if that works with her religion and her beliefs great more power to her um, Absolutely. Yeah, but pro-choice. So, you know, this this podcast, Handmade to Heroin, Heroin as Defined by Owning One's Own Autonomy. Oh, for goodness sakes, you know, and Handmade from being someone who either came in by brainwashing or who was forced into a system of unwilling servitude, unwilling birthitude, is that a word? But anyway... <laughs> I think it applies here. Um, so you said something a moment ago about 1936 Germany, having been brought up in Germany. So it's interesting to me that your family decided to leave Iran, presumably before 79. Oh, yeah. My, my father, it had nothing to do with the revolution. My dad um, came to Germany uh, in the 60s because his brother uh, came first, Nuri, and uh, he made a fortune with carpet uh, export, with the fine uh, silk carpets from Iran. And um, he became very, very successful. And so um, <laughs> my grandparents said, you go to Germany and you make your fortune. My dad was, um, uh, didn't, didn't want to go. He went, went for three months, said, I don't like it. Came back and they went like, well, you're not welcome here anymore. You go. <laughs> <laughs> and he, had to, he had to go back. He didn't want to go, but he had to go back and studied uh, and became, uh, you know, first an electrician, then an engineer. But he's always been uh, a singer, a musician. That was his passion. So, um, yeah, so he he lived in Germany and became legally a German um uh, way before the revolution. And he uh, was so nice. heartbroken about what happened to um, his beautiful country that he never went back. You know, one thing that I think is also important for people to know is that the, with the uprising that's happening right now, 65, no, 70% of people in Iran are under the age of 30 because really? of huge chunk and a whole generation was eliminated in the iran iraq war which um also instigated by um the united states of america um and so for oil presumably 65 percent of um uh, of university graduates are female and uh, there are women in a lot of positions but a woman can't be a judge 
um, you know, there are certain things that she she can't be. She can't be a judge, for example. Um, so you imagine uh, young people who have absolutely no future and the sanctions have hurt the people very, very much. The sanctions, the sanctions, people, the sanctions that that we put on Iran, um, uh, you know, have crippled the economy, have crippled uh, the people in Iran and um, uh, they see no prospect. So they're ready to die for the cause because they are so desperate. And it really breaks my heart to think that you see no future and you're ready to die for your freedom so that others can be free. I mean, that's that, powerful. That, that is bravery. And uh, I'll tell you this, just from the astrology perspective, um, in March, Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius. It's been in Capricorn for like 20 years or what have you. And that's uh, Aquarius is all about egalitarian ideals, um, community networks. And so to me, it'll be very surprising. I'll be really surprised if they don't succeed. And I'll be really surprised if something doesn't happen in March just to, you know, um, because it's a lot of raw, powerful transformational energy and we'll see it globally. But it, I feel like with Iran that it's like everybody's looking and I almost feel like there's going to be a domino effect. Um, yeah, hopefully a very positive <laughs> domino effect. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, just for freedom, autonomy, egalitarian, cooperative ideals, which is very much more, um, more the way of the divine feminine, you know, because patriarchy, hierarchical, I'll tell you what to think and do. And, and then here we have collaborative um, with self-respect and respecting others. Uh, that's a very different and needed model, I feel. Oh, um, yes. I mean, uh, I've spoken to people who were there during the revolution and then came my friend Carmel, for example, she was born in Iran and then came to the United States and also to the South. And um, mm. she um, she said this feels different than than uh, anything uh, that that than than anything that has happened since 79. And uh, my cousin who lives in Toronto, uh, Mahnoush, I spoke to her yesterday and she said the same. Like this time it feels different. It's not it's like exciting. 2009 or 2014 where the Green Revolution, you know, we thought, oh, maybe something will happen. This time it, like the revolution is here to stay until they are gone. And they've been brought to know. Yes, yes, yes. We had Nuremberg after World War II, like some accountability, yeah. which is which is a lovely and refreshing thought in these days is for someone to, you know, a, a villain to have accountability <laughs> at January 6th. <laughs> but it, it, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, justice. Imagine that accountability for what one does. Because if you or I, uh, Jay walked, uh, you know, in, in downtown Manhattan one day because we just didn't feel like doing whatever. Um, you know, we might could get a ticket or something. Like we could get in trouble. There are places where you and I could do something and we'd get busted. And yet, if someone does something incredibly, unbelievably more meaningful, <laughs> you know, and disastrous and just you know, I, I think um, I would like to see accountability. Oh, um, yes. please, please. That I, mean, I, I think that's what we really need because there is no justice system. Uh, the, the, the justice system is rotten and there is something rotten in the state of Denmark um, and here <laughs> and everywhere else in the world. And uh, I, I, I think we're going to see a, a move of people have had enough of this injustice. 
people have had enough and um, more power to the people, you know. Yes. Yeah. So I agree. Um, what, so, okay, I'm just going to be completely candid. When I see videos like, there's an incredible video of the young women with the hijabs off and they're in the school and they're like shaming the one administrator guy and he finally just like leaves. Oh my God. Oh my God. I love that. Such yeah. power. Them holding on to their power instead of, you know, saving their skins, understandably. Um, but, you know, it's just, oh, it's just so phenomenal. And all I can do is like and save like if it's on TikTok, because that or comment, like, and say boosts it or just write boost. Um, and it's like, I don't know what else to do. I have absolutely no idea what else to do except to, and, and thank you very much for being a guest and educating people. It's not like, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions that I think got cleared up uh, well, today. Absolutely. What can we do? You know, the fact that you are even interested in this um, as somebody who has no uh, uh, connection to Iran other than mm -hmm. than an open heart um, uh, and a platform um, mm -hmm. uh, is already really, really great. And I want to thank you for that. That really is is phenomenal. And mm -hmm. and liking and sharing. We think that it doesn't change anything. It, it changes everything. Because whenever the internet <laughs> works there, the people there, they get a morality boost seeing that, you know, people all over the world support them. Um, what people can do, there's a petition going around from uh, Amnesty International and other okay. um, organizations um, that is asking for the UN to, um, you know, to consider um, uh, uh, doing something. Um, so they, uh, we can call our senators and and ask for an investigation into um, uh, you know into a human rights violation. Um, so so we we can do those things. Those are things we can do because we presumably still live in a democracy, and we presumably care <clears throat> about um, democracy and freedom. Um, not only in our own country, but elsewhere as well. I believe as it goes for the, them, it goes for us. Like there's there's no uh, people over there or whatever. Kind of, we're all one. Like it, there's no disconnection there. Genuinely and truly, I believe this. It's like if it's happening with somebody over there, like, you know, it, and it's never been more obvious, especially since we're all so aware of what's going on in the global stage. And it's like, I, I really believe that as what goes on with Iran is going to, it's going to absolutely um, affect how things are here. It's, if they get away with it, yeah. I mean, if the if the theocracy uh, gets away with it, I don't think they will. Though what you said about all the young people there, they're not having it. Mm -mm. <clears throat> no. They're, they're not having it. I think, like, I really applaud the um, the young generation. You know, the kids in you know in their the teens, twenties, thirties. Um, I I think they're phenomenal, and it can be annoying this whole woke thing. Oh yeah, and now what do I call it? All of that. You know, some right. some of these things are I I think are going a little bit overboard, but. The pendulum is going to swing back and 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 settle somewhere in a, a good place. I think it's important that the things that are being addressed are being addressed, and we can really look to the young people, the young people in Iran, um, uh, you know, for for guidance in 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 bravery, and in also really when you, when you feel an injustice, stand up. And, you know, we, you were talking about the handmaids um, and, mm, mm, and mm. when we look at our own lives as women who live in a free country, yeah, we still get raised with the residue or the full in power patriarchy. And so we yes. have an internalized patriarchy in us that is keeping us bound. You know, whether we outwardly look like we have all the rights in the world, 
We don't. Right. We they, there is no equality yet, and no. um, that I find like one fact that I found out yesterday, which shocked me. For example, as a director, um, is that in the United States, only five percent of the directors in film are women. In Lebanon, it's 50. <laughs> of film. In television, it's 80% women. 80% of television in Lebanon, which is another place that was called the Paris of the Middle East um, mm. after Iran, um, are women. So I don't think we can parade around and go highfalutin, you know, we are so free. Like, no, I don't need it. If once I'm paid the same as a man, that's when I say, okay, we have a quality. Yes. We have a long way to go. We absolutely have a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, I can assure you. <laughs> but yeah, that was where, that's where my laugh came from. It was, it was of the obvious hypocrisy uh, here. It's, yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, there's, and very much um, to your point about internalized patriarchy. And mm -hmm. it's something that, um, especially in this process of interviewing so many people who were either born into or married into or moved into these um, culty situations. Um, and it's like, it, it's, there'll be a layer there'll be something it's like why am i oh that's why i was doing that because it's not yeah you know, it, it was an ingrained habit ver and frame of mind versus an actual authentic volitional decision and it was like and that, i think that's what people really um need to be more conscious of is your own actual like volition your your embodied free will and listening to that and mm -hmm. giving it primacy over well these are someone else's rules and they say they're very important and wonderful and it's like well what's 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 really true here yeah you know like with the first kiss that it's an alive it's a living moment it's it's completely it should be completely a free living experience that's you know volitional versus like some prescription and some dry crusty prescription that someone else has there's no life in it it's kind of and that's what i think a lot of these old patriarchal rules are like there's no life in them yeah there's just rule keepers yeah and they're also keeping not only us bound but men as well and anybody in between you know <clears throat> yes yes so oof. um i'm optimistic about what happens in Iran. I think they I think we need to fully support, we need to fully like, comment, share, amplify. If every one of us amplified what we see coming out of there, I think it would absolutely completely juice, encourage, enthuse, especially it's mostly young people posting these. And you know, they're all communicating with each other and, and it's exciting. It gives them endorphins, it gives them dopamine, it, it, it encourages them to like they're not alone. Yeah, um, and it, it's making me teary eyed. Uh, you, you, you saying that, but I, 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 I really hope so. I, I, I feel strangely optimistic too, although it seems almost, you know, impossible to 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 feel optimistic. But uh, there is a change coming, and I think I mean it can't be a change for the worse because. <laughs> I can't think of a worse theocracy than Iran. Um, right. I can't think of a worse place um, right. uh, to live. Congo, obviously, is also one of those places. You know, there there are many horrific places, mm. uh, of course. But but of course. I feel optimistic, and I think it's a snowball effect, and it's also the butterfly effect is yes. you know, something is changing here, something is changing here. And and we yes. all matter. Each story matters and changes. And if it only changes one soul, you know, that was life worth living. Yes.
already. Oh, I'm so excited. So we'll all amplify. We'll just all like, comment, share all these videos. And um, thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank oh, you very, very much for your Lord. story. Thank you for, for doing this work. And thank you for having me here. And Pishy, Pishy, by oh. the way. Hello. Oh, handsome <laughs> man, Pishy. kitty. <laughs> Pishy um, uh, means cat in Persian. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, my, my little boy, Chi, just left, but I just named him Chi because it's life. It's life for Oh, sweet. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Chi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.